Well, David Hare is from the NHS Partners Network, which is the trade association for independent sector providers of NHS clinical services. Morning, David. Morning, James. So, is there a creeping privatisation of the NHS? I think the really important thing to bear in mind when looking at the issue of the role of the private sector in the NHS is that since the NHS inception in 1948, it has always had uh, private sector involvement. GPs have always been uh, independent contractors to the NHS. The same is, uh, is, is true for community pharmacists, and the NHS has, has long used private hospitals to help with, with waiting time performance. I can absolutely understand concerns that people have around privatisation because I think what that does is raise questions around selling off state assets, selling off hospitals or, or, or maybe more concerningly having to get your credit card out to pay for treatment after, you, after you've had it but the, uh, the private sector's role in the service along with voluntary organisations and the public sector is entirely consistent with the principles of the NHS which is free at the point of use and available to all and, and, and to be honest consistently the public report being relaxed frankly about who provides their NHS funded care providing it is high quality uh, and free at the point of view so uh, I think some of these issues can get uh, can get framed quite differently. Yeah and I get that and, and you're right I mean no one is talking at the moment about when you visit a hospital or your GP or whatever getting a massive bill that you have to get your debit card out to pay for at the end of it but it's that thing about private companies. Ultimately, private companies, like any company, are after a profit. They want to make a profit. And is a profit motive acceptable in a national health service? I think what you see in terms of profit is organisations investing in new services, investing in new technology. The NHS at the moment is is crying out for, for, for investment. And for those organisations that, that are unable to get public capital from, from the government to fund those new services, then clearly there has to be a return. I think a point I, I, I would make, particularly around those uh, organisations delivering uh, private hospital services, acute services to patients, is they're paid exactly the same amount to deliver that service as the NHS is paid to do it, uh, and that that means they have to focus very much on delivering an efficient, high-quality service. And if they don't deliver an efficient, high-quality service, then they'll cease to be uh, commissioned or patients will cease to choose to use them. So I think it can be consistent and a positive thing. What about the role of private companies going forward for the NHS? Because we know there's a huge amount of strain on the health service at the moment. We know the funding's a continuing problem. Do you see a situation down the line where Britain could move to some kind of partial insurance system like they have in Germany, in the United States, where some of it is paid out of general tax and some of it is paid out of personal contributions? Could that happen? I think the thing that the British public value most about the NHS is that it's paid for out of general taxation and that effectively we, we collectively pool risk. And for the NHS Partners Network, we believe that that principle is one that is, is highly valuable and means that people can access the care that they need when they need it. Clearly, change of, of, of that system would be a matter for politicians and for public debate, but we believe that that principle, which is well established in British society and something that has delivered, frankly, fantastic care from both public and private organisations, frankly, over many decades, is something that people would like to see retained. Do you think, at the very least, private sector provision, the number of private companies doing operations and other kinds of treatment on the NHS is going to go up because we know there's this funding crisis in the NHS. Could private companies be turned to more and more? Uh, I think that private companies deliver a very diverse range of services to NHS patients. I think um, there is a right of of, of choice. Patients can choose where to go. We're seeing more and more patients choosing to use particularly private hospitals as NHS hospital waiting lists get squeezed. But I think there will also be um, a growth in the uh, use of private organisations to deliver greater efficiency, uh, particularly in hospital trusts, because of the need to, to contain costs. So, you know, I don't think this will be a, a, a dramatic rise. It will be consistent with the principles of, of, of the NHS, but I think we will continue to see private organisations delivering fantastic services for NHS patients. What about, and I mean this is maybe a slightly different issue, but talking about the role of privatisation, whatever you want to call it within the NHS, could you see a scenario when, for example, if you don't turn up to your GP appointment, you get a fine, or if you go to A&E on a Saturday night because you've been out on the town and, and you have been responsible for getting into that state, do you see a situation where fines and charges could come into effect for certain types of treatment? 
I think it's certainly independent experts that, that have looked at this have said that it's probably a very difficult thing to introduce because you're effectively having to, to make a moral judgment. And these things, when looked at from the outside, can be fairly straightforward. Actually, when you get into the, the nitty-gritty of the case, why is it that someone hasn't been able to uh, attend a GP appointment or why is it that somebody uh, has turned up at A&E with a particular difficulty? Recouping the money requires a, a, a significant bureaucracy to manage to do it. So, so I think it, I think it unlikely... Um, I think we're far better off focusing on how to drive the most efficient and effective healthcare system, which is free at the point of view for all. General election coming up. You don't need me to tell you that, David. Um, do, you think, do you think the debate around the health service at the moment is in a good state? Because clearly there's this big issue over funding. Do we need to be a bit more grown up about either looking at serious reforms of the NHS or being prepared to reach into our pockets and pay a lot more to keep it going? Well, I think the, the, you know, the thing that we see in the general election debate is that the NHS continues to be a significant issue for the general public, and rightly so. People want high-quality public services. They want high-quality NHS and, and social care services as well. I think that money is part of that, and that will come through in the debate. But we absolutely also need to look at, at reform and how we, how we move the system and how we move the service forward. I think a, a snap general election makes that debate quite difficult. Clearly the parties are uh, looking quite quickly to ha what, what they can put on, put on the table so that makes it difficult and, and we know Brexit will, will dominate the debate uh, but hopefully what we'll start to see is a sensible conversation about how we both fund and deliver our health and care services into the future to put them onto a sustainable footing and move away from what feels like a continual uh, crisis across the service with negative headlines almost every day. Well, we shall see. Thank you ever so much, David. Appreciate your time this morning. David Hare from the NHS Partners Network. James Hansen on BBC Radio Bristol.